Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today is going to be Crypt of Hearts 1 on Veteran and of course I'm going to show the hard mode as well. Same setup as before, one tank, one healer, one mag DPS and one stam DPS. Keeping it as balanced as possible, making sure no rolls are left out. This is the last version 1 dungeon in the series, so after this is going to be the more neutral ones and then we're going to push into version 2s and DLCs. So hopefully this helps and hopefully this gives you an idea of um, what to expect when you go into Crypt of Hearts and of course explain the mechanics of all the bosses if you're not already familiar with them. Here we go. Okay, so first of all, when you come into this dungeon, you're greeted with a room full of basically trash mobs. You have a few melees that the tank needs to kind of grab hold of really, really quickly to prevent people getting heavy attacked. And of course, there's plenty of ranged as well. Now, the same as before, any archers or mage types, you need to make sure you interrupt them if you see them um, casting or channeling any uh, abilities. So if you see the red flashing kind of visual coming from the center of their body, that's your cue to interrupt them. So make sure that you get your tank to pull as much into the middle as possible so that you can manage them much better with AoE damage and of course again make sure you always interrupt. You see this archer over here, if you're next to him and he's channeling, interrupt him. If not the tank should be able to pull him into position. Flash that, there you go. Now the next room is fairly small, there's not too much to manage with. The tank should be doing the same as before, get into the center of the room, pull everything in, make sure nothing is hitting the DPS. Whether that means um, pinning stuff on the ground or physically taunting it to make sure it doesn't chase that off the DPS or the healers, either um, way make sure that the tank is on point again the same applies as before make sure you interrupt the bad stuff there's a couple of archers in the room you see that there he needs to be interrupted same goes for the guy at the back as well otherwise they'll get arrow sprayed and it really really hurts most healers can manage it but if they're not awake then you can cause yourself some problems okay jump into this little hole down here you won't die just jump it's absolutely fine just like vaults of madness there's some random stuff going on now, this next pull is fairly difficult for some, especially if a DPS goes in first. There's a lot of range stuff, you need to make sure your tank pulls everything in, stay out of the stupid stuff on the ground, and of course interrupt the range targets. There is a ghost running around as well who can cause a little bit of a fear problem, so just make sure you get rid of him really quickly. The boss himself is quite low in terms of health and damage output, but he can overwhelm you if you're not careful. He has a nasty negate bubble which will obviously stop you from using magicka abilities so be very very careful now if you can burn down the ads in the middle that's perfect if not just kind of keep an eye on them make sure they're not casting anything and interrupt them as and when you can don't focus the boss too much to start with if you can help it although if you've got lots and lots of damage of course you can kill them all together now keep an eye on his heavy attack the tank needs to make sure that that is blocked at all times and stay out of that that big circle there one of them is a ring where you can kind of stay in the middle but if you touch the edges you're dead um, the other is the negate bubble. Obviously, as you can see, he doesn't last very long. But the two circle mechanics are what to look out for. One is like a donut ring. You stay in or you stay out. The other is a negate bubble, in which case you do want to get out of it as soon as possible. If you're a tank that can survive it and can still taunt and block in there, then by all means, that's absolutely fine. But if you need heals, you're going to have to get out or get your healer to wake up because you can't cast magic abilities inside of it. Same sort of pull here. Taunt everything together. Hold it still. AoE it down. This one on this corner can be a little tricky. Make sure that you get these down quite quickly because they do cast time a, a cone effect which can stun you or kind of stifle you on the spot. So you want to avoid that. They're not too difficult to kill. They can just pump out some nasty AoE effects. They can't be interrupted. Just like most zombies, they also put an AoE on the floor sometimes when they die. Now this guy periodically will spawn lots and lots of zombies, so you have to be very aware of what's going on. Also he'll get a damage shield as well, so you have to burn through that phase, you can't crit it or anything, so you have to have quite a lot of flat damage to get through it, or it'll just take you a long time, which is fine. The AoE he puts on the floor just there, all you need to do is step out of it. Of course it will snare you and stun you and all that nastiness and do a lot of damage, but you need to just stay out of it. He'll put that on the floor every so often, and then occasionally um, he will spawn a room full of zombies. As you can now see there'll be zombies coming in. Now that he's channeling, he gets a damage shield, and all his friends come in. However, you can kill them quite quickly. So as long as you've got plenty of AoE on the ground, you can kill them really, really fast. If not, if you are lacking damage and your group is struggling with that um, area, then make sure that you obviously just follow the mechanics as usual and get your tank to grab hold of those zombies as soon as possible so that they can be killed on the spot rather than running around the room. Major point to remember, again, just like every other dungeon, do not run around the room. You're not going to do anything positive by doing that. You're going to take all the ads with you. You're going to make the tank sprint after the ads. 
The boss is going to leave the damage. It, it doesn't help. So don't run around the room. Stay kind of in the middle. Stay out of the AOEs and just continue doing what you're doing. This pull's fairly simple. Pull in the ranged. If you're the tank, keep everything in the middle. Much AOE damage as possible and stay on those interrupts. Again, the zombies do spit at you. They can't be interrupted, but the archers can be. So keep your eyes peeled for those. The next boss for most pickups is a bit of a nightmare because they don't really know how to control him, which is what this video is for. I'm going to be telling you how to deal with it. These guys here, the same again. Put them all in the middle. Interrupt anyone that's casting. Especially the ghosts because they do quite nasty damage across the floor aiming at whoever they feel like. This particular direction I don't believe we had to go to but we can kill them anyway. Especially on no, uh, no death runs. Some of them require you to kill every single enemy in the game. Some of the older dungeons not so much. Including this one perhaps. But just make it a habit to kill everything. Those can be interrupted, by the way. Master chest. Happy days. You don't see that very often. But there, there's, there's a treasure chest point for you. Remember that. Remember where it is. Hopefully it's there for you as well. Nice. Not bad. <laughs> okay, the next room is full of a mixture of enemies to start with, including some ghosts. So you have to make sure that the tank grabs those really, really quickly. They must be interrupted, otherwise they do nasty cold damage. You don't want to get hit by that. The Wraith in the middle, get rid of him quick, put everything else in, and interrupt the range stuff. So keep an eye on those archers if you're a DPS or, or a tank, even if you've got ranged interrupts. You maybe use nice stuff, who knows. Key point is always interrupt anything that is channeling. Because they're normally the most dangerous effects. Now this boss, every so often, will charge in the direction of the tank. A really long way. So what you need to do is make him face a wall. So you'll see um, our tank Matt in a moment. Will actually put his back to the wall. That is because when he charges at him, that's the direction he's going to go. Then when he's finished, move him to another direction, put you back against the wall. See, there's the charge. It's massive, but he can't go anywhere. Now, he will do an AoE burst after that. Just simply get out of it. Again, Matt's gone to another corner. Lay down your dots. He'll run into the wall again. And he'll just repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, when he gets very low health, instead of doing this usual burst AoE that he does there, he will do a slightly different one which will still be dodgeable, but it will still knock you down, and his charge will actually leave behind a fire trail, as you can see there. You don't want to get caught by that, and also, I said that the AoE changes. This is the new AoE. It looks the same, except it's much, much bigger. If you dodge roll, you will dodge the initial damage, but you'll still get hit with the fire damage afterwards and knock down. But make sure you dodge, and it won't kill you. Remember, use the corners, use the walls, because if you're aiming the wrong direction, like the direction I'm aiming now, he can run all the way down there. You really don't want him to do that. You can have fire trails across the room. The next boss is very, very simple. He's quite easy to manage, but it requires a lot of um, attention to be paid to your feet. Now, he can't go off balance, which is also a factor to consider, um, but he can do quite a lot of damage to you if you're not aware of what's going on. He'll usually put three circles on the ground, and you all you need to do is stay in the gaps. It's very, very simple. I've seen people run around like headless chickens. It doesn't work. So get rid of this Bone Colossus first of all. He does the frontal AoE, so make sure the tank turns him away from the group so they don't get squashed. It's not too challenging. Um, but this is the main boss, the Lich guy here. He... There you go, there's a circle that you have to avoid. They're the main ones. Now look, the three Lich Crystals, stay out of them. Food run out, perfect. Then there's some more around the edges, stay out of those. There are five around the edges and three around the middle. So if you're around the edges, you've got less uh, room to maneuver yourself in. If you're in the center, there's only three to avoid. Just stay in the gaps. See that? Got in a gap. Boom. Safe. There's the other five around the room. No one's anywhere near them. We're good. That's all you have to do. Now the tank, just turn it away from the group so that he takes all the light attacks and heavy attacks that he throws out, which are not that challenging. But above all, of course, stay out of the juice on the floor. So again, to recap, the small AoE that he puts down occasionally, stay out of it. Three Lich Crystals in the middle, five on the outside. So on the outside, you're probably dead. If you're on the inside, just stay in the gaps. You don't have to run around in circles. It will not help. Now, the next corridor of adds is not too challenging. You do have some ranged uh, mage types, which do need to be interrupted. Otherwise, they put a nasty burst AoE effect on the ground, and it can really, really hurt. And the Bone Colossus, of course, need to be turned away from the group because he has a frontal cone-type AoE damage that you really need to keep your DPS out of. But apart from that, as long as you interrupt and turn them around, you should be just fine. See, there's the big burst damage from the mage at the back there that we failed to interrupt. There's the cone from the, the Bone Colossus. 
stay out of it if it's facing you, but primarily you want your tank to turn it away from the group. It's a lot, lot easier to manage. They can hurt, but if it's turned away, you're just fine. It doesn't do any other damage. Um, apart from other tank, of course, little light attacks here and there. This pull here, watch the Bankins, they do explode and interrupt those mages. It is crucial that they're interrupted. It's a small area, you don't want that big AoE to land on your head. They can both fire one off at the same time and you can wipe lesser resistant DPSs quite easily. Now the next boss is a bit uh, weak in terms of health. You can see he's only got 800 uh, 831k health. But he's got a lot of Bankins, they do explode, they're quite nasty. So get rid of them as quick as possible and your tank should hold the boss in the center of the room. The main thing you want to take a note of or take uh, pay attention to is the fact that he has a nasty heavy attack. Now if a DPS gets caught by that, it will kill them. You need to block it. If a tank is on it, again, same applies, you need to block it. He has got a channeled kind of crippling effect and a burst AoE that you can block or break free from if it catches you, but it's not too problematic. You should be just fine. Block the heavies, kill the Bankins, burn him down. Hold him still, however, don't dart around the room in circles, it will never help anyone. Okay, so that scroll was a hard mode button pressed, and of course we have the Alambras twins. There's two different ones, of course, one does one type of damage, one does the other. Now the blue one, the one on the right, he is a melee based um, target. He will fire out heavy attacks like it's going out of fashion from his two-hander, and if you don't block it on time, he will knock you down and fire you across the room. If you're a DPS, you're dead. If you're a tank, you're going to take a lot of damage. But his heavy attack is delayed. What I mean by that is if you think you've timed it right, you probably haven't because you don't just block when you think the swing is going to hit you, you need to block straight away. The actual effect will hit you before he's finished swinging, it's a bit buggy, so be careful with that, make sure you always block it as the tank. Now the guy in the middle, Zaven, he is a bit of a problem. He will stay in the middle, he will do nothing but magic type damage, or flame damage specifically to be honest, um, but he's got several different effects. One is a big burst AoE that you have to get out of, so just dodge roll out of the center and come back in again when it's finished. If you don't dodge roll it, you will be knocked down and it's really problematic, especially for the tank. If you've got that blue guy on you and you get knocked down at the same time and he's doing a heavy attack, he's going to kill you. So make sure the tank stays out of it as well. Now, the other effects that he does is that line of fire you just saw me move away from. If you don't move away from that as a DPS, you are dead. So when he puts his hand in the air, he's going to do a fire uh, line in a straight line aiming at whoever he's looking at at the time. So if it's you, move left or right a little bit. Don't sprint around the room, it won't help. Just just move a little bit. The other mechanic, of course, is um, you can see the orbs in the middle of the room. Like the, the AoE with a dome on them. That's a lightning effect. That comes from the other um, boss, the one that the tank has got at the moment, the two-hander. He will put them down periodically, just stay out of them. It's very, very simple to avoid. And basically, if you kill them both at the same time, that's absolutely fine if you can manage it. If not, you can kill one, then kill the other. However, if you do, they will enrage. So you have to make sure that you're aware of that. See, big circle, get out of it. Now you can kill these two together, you can kill one or the other in whichever order you want, but I personally kill the mage first because then we get rid of all that big burst AoE. We don't have that stuff anymore, so we don't have to keep dodge rolling out of the way of it. Once he's dead, get the tank to bring the blue guy, the one with the two-hander in, bring him into the center, and just get your DPS to find themselves a nice little place where they can fire off their rotations and gradually kill the guy. Now, he will still do the the lightning orb effect, you can see the ball on the floor with a big dome in it. They will still happen, but above all, the enrage mechanic is this. You can see that there's lightning splashes landing all around the room. Now, it looks a little bit hectic, but if you just take a second and relax, you can see that they're quite obvious to see. They grow, so they don't affect you straight away, and if you see it near your feet, all you need to do is just move left or right a little bit to get out of it. Now, he will still do his heavy attacks, so the tanks has to be on top of that a lot. Um, so don't miss those heavies, otherwise it's really problematic. He leaves the darts, you get stunned, you'll probably fall into one of those domes and you'll die. Just keep him still, don't panic. Again, you can see that we're in a little formation where we are all got our own space. We just move a little bit in and out of the AoEs as and when they land. There's always a phase where there's nothing at all. You can see now there's loads of splashes. Then once the splashes are gone, everything's calm again. There we go, splashes are now about to finish. And everything's back to normal for out another one and it starts again more splashes so just move in and out of them as much as you can without dancing around the room and causing a problem for the group so hopefully that helped hopefully that wasn't too boring and now hopefully you have a better understanding of how to manage crypt of hearts one especially the mechanics on hard mode as well which can be quite challenging at first glance but of course once you fully understand what's going on it's a lot lot easier to manage 
Now, of course, now we're at the end of version 1 dungeons, I'm now going to be hitting the neutral dungeons. So we're talking uh, Diafrost, Volenfell, Blackheart Haven, all those shiny ones. There's 8 of them in total, so they're coming next. After that, there's going to be the version 2 dungeons, there's another 8 of those. And then after those are finished, there's going to be the DLC content, which is obviously quite uh, favourable to most, and there's a lot of people asking about it, but don't worry, that is all coming. So, first of all, if you're not subscribing and you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so, it is free. Secondly, of course, if you'd like to support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zonodegaming.com. All of the build videos um, have their written guides with them, and also so do the dungeon guides. So you can see this in a written format as well, with a picture of the boss and all the explanation about the mechanics in there as well, just in case this was a little too fast and a little too confusing. But hopefully it helped nonetheless. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.